Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this Monday evening, or Tuesday evening, July 14th, 2020, 7.40 p.m. West Coast time here, and taking a look at the Earthquake 3D program. Shows the latest earthquake on the globe, a 2.6 magnitude quake. Uh, looks like up there around Alaska, there is an earthquake coming into the seismograph stations right now, uh, which has not uh, been put out from the USGS yet far as um, far as the magnitude goes but it's kind of a little localized quake here in Southern California there near Laurel Mountain uh, just not 100% sure on the magnitude yet but uh, definitely flatlining the seismograph station here as you can see with that spike of an earthquake and taking a look at the um, recent map here of the California and Nevada quakes here. Let's go ahead and refresh this just to show you guys that this is the latest earthquake map. Uh, it's, you know, it's, I don't know if that's going to be that earthquake or not. 2.7. It's possible that little red square there uh, in Nevada uh, with that 2.7 could be that one showing up on the live side of the graph station. I believe Laurel Mountain might be uh, a station there in Nevada. It's just one I don't normally use uh, and it doesn't say if it's Nevada or California. I just can't remember so it's possible that could be indeed the earthquake that's showing up right there on the live seismograph stations. Uh, so taking a look at uh, uh, taking a look at Southern California there's still quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, rocking around the Ridgecrest area. This is still aftershock activity following the uh, earthquakes of last year, July 4th and July 5th. And of course, some aftershock activity further up north towards Lone Pine on the Lone Pine uh, fault system up there. From uh, This is all basically aftershock activity following the uh, larger quake a couple weeks ago in that region. Along the San Andreas fault system down here, still relatively quiet on the southern end like it has been for quite a while. Of course, sometimes we do see some small quakes and some swarming activity going on down there. But as far as any major release down here, still, you know, it's, we're waiting on it. We've been waiting on it for quite a long time. And eventually that big one will take place down there on the southern section. There's a little article I want to show you guys here in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, as far as earthquake activity goes, just some microquakes in and around the... Uh, Indio region, Palm Springs, all the way down over here south of Riverside as well. This is typical during a, uh, well, any day, any given day, there's uh, always activity down there. And uh, it's just a pretty much a complex fault of uh, fault systems, if you will, spider webs of many different faults. That's what I kind of like to call it here. Uh, Taking a look at this other earthquake map here on the USGS scale. There's that 2.7 that did show up near Laurel Mountain on the seismograph stations. A little bit more up uptick in activity up here towards Idaho uh, with quite a few twos and even a three thrown in there as well. Now, once again, this is only the 2.5 earthquake, uh, 2.5 magnitude earthquake and above. Here's the, this is an article that just got put out. And if you do a search on the San Andreas Fault, you can see many, many articles throughout uh, the mainstream media and, of course, other ones such as like Daily Mail and whatnot of, uh, of the uh, study that was put out uh, about the increased in risk of a major earthquake along the San Andreas Fault following that uh, Ridgecrest earthquake sequence from last year. So I went ahead and picked an article right here from KTVU. And uh, this was published about eight hours ago here on their on their web page. And just going to go over just a little bit of this article here. Um, this talks about, it's a study, right? Uh, looks like Seismology Society of America has delivered some unfavorable news about the likelihood of an earthquake in Southern California. Of course, since I was a little kid, I was always told, right? The big one's coming to... California, you know, you know, the big one, the big one. Everyone's talking about the big one. Okay, the northern section of the San Andreas Fault has had its release, a big earthquake there, uh, 1906, and of course, other uh, earthquakes in there as well, up to date. 
Also central section of the San Andreas Fault has had some um, large earthquakes as well with, with some uh, good release of pressure. What we haven't seen is a good release of pressure along the southern section of the San Andreas Fault there. Southern California region um, in quite some time, three, 300 and something years or so. So all that pressure been building up ever since and uh, uh, I was always told when I was younger it's going to be soon. But here it is, you know, a long time later and we still haven't had a big earthquake down there. So when it does happen, it's definitely going to be a big one. Um, the study suggests that last year's earthquakes in Ridgecrest, California increased the likelihood of a major earthquake. And we talk about this a lot in our update videos, how um, certain fault systems do provide or relieve pressure uh, on other fault systems, whether it be really close by or could be potentially hundreds of miles away. And that's something that makes sense because obviously uh, when you have stresses of plate tectonics involved there, the pressure just dis does not disappear in a thin air. It transfers whether it's at the surface or below. Um, and it could be very localized where it could be increasing more pressure or it could be hundreds of miles away. That's a fact. Uh, in the next year, there's a 2.3 chance, very minimal, of a 7.5 or greater magnitude earthquake on the Garlock Fault. That's that fault that kind of runs from the west to east direction, which is uh, sits just south of Ridgecrest area. Uh, it's a pretty good sized fault too. Uh, so 7.5 or greater magnitude earthquake on the Garlock Fault, which runs along the north edge of the Mojave Desert. That's a big jump from chances previously reported. Uh, let's see, studies, study authors say the good, the, that could trigger an earthquake on the San Andreas Fault, which would affect Los Angeles and surrounding uh, areas. They don't mention how big the earthquake could be along the San Andreas, but if you watch some of my videos and studied the San Andreas Fault system, uh, we're talking about an 8.0 or so. Um, along the southern section of the San Andreas Fault System. So that's a, uh, about a maximum uh, magnitude. Could potentially be a little bit bigger, but they're, they're stating uh, right around an 8.0 for maximum magnitude uh, release of pressure there along the San Andreas Fault there, San southern section. Um, let's see, we estimate 2.3 chance of magnitude 7.7 .7 Garlock Fault rupture in the next year. In other words, one chance in 43. Uh, this is 100 times higher than its annual chances in the blah 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 benchmark model for California. So that year has basically come and passed. Let's see, a 1.15 chance of great San Andreas rupture in the next year is low. It is the same as saying that there is a 98.9% .9 chance it won't rupture, okay? Uh, so no one should panic, but as we have seen during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, blah 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 that's kind of a low percentage that they're stating right there but uh, I guarantee you uh, something's up I think these folks know a lot more than they're uh, they're giving off right now the uh, and of course they won't let us they won't tell us I mean they, they may they may have you know knowledge of it of when it might go possible potentially or they might be signs that they're looking at, but it's kind of strange how the article just got put out today. Um, sheep hole fault, that's pretty funny. So looking at the map here, San Andreas fault system here runs just north of the San Andre uh, Salton Sea region, right? You got the Salton Sea down there, there's the Su San Andreas fault zone, the southern section, which extends kind of down there to the Brawley, and then the Imperial fault system, which sits down there even further south, okay? There's definitely been some activity, uh, larger quake release down here uh, within about, when was it, about four or five years ago, maybe longer, I'm thinking a little bit longer, probably closer to nine or 10, uh, down there south of Mexicali, which shook San Diego and whatnot um, quite a few years ago, about 10 years ago. But far as this southern section here from north part of, or the uh, central part of the Salton Sea region up through this region here, near the San Bernardino Mountains and I think uh, kind of extends up here a little bit. So they're talking about this dark red line which is the San Andreas Fault System. If this entire thing were to rupt rupture the entire section, you know, not just a little section down here 
I'm sure there's still a lot of pressure built up, even with a small little release, it could be a good sized earthquake. But this entire section here that's been locked and loaded for so many years, about 320 something years since the, the last major one on there, I believe. Um, let's look here exactly when that last earthquake was. Uh, let's see here. I've, I've done a couple updates on this before, folks. But uh, let's see, su southern section. Let's see if it's going to give us a date. There's an 8.1. Here's where they talk about the southern segment, which stretches from Parkfield. Okay, it's a little bit more north than what I had pointed out. Uh, in Monterey County, all the way to the Salton Sea region, is capable of an 8.1. So a little bit larger than what I had stated at its closest. Uh, this fault passes 35 miles to the northeast of Los Angeles. Such a large earthquake on this southern segment would kill thousands of people and uh, of course do tremendous damage in that region uh let's see here let's see if i can find out where the uh last major quake was i'm there we go okay so they talk about uh massive earthquakes on the Central and Northern section, right? Central 1857 and Northern 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Uh, while the Southern section has not seen any similar rupture for at least 300 years, folks. So that's a lot of buildup, um, um, you know, being being played there along that plate boundary uh, between the North American and the Pacific plate there. So, uh, you know, it's coming. It is definitely coming, but they, it's kind of strange that they put out an article and it's all over the place it's not just you know drama news it's all over the mainstream media National Geographic New York Time um, everywhere so who knows it's 2020 and it's definitely something we should uh, probably not ignore right if it's gonna happen I think it's gonna be this year so well, we've got another little earthquake there near Little Lake 2.7 there north of the Ridgecrest area that's gonna be this uh, red circle right there but uh, just be prepared folks I mean it's gonna happen we gotta make sure we're prepared and not uh, not being scared right don't want to be scared you want to be prepared and have an earthquake plan and make sure that uh, you're gonna survive it there's a good like I said this is Wikipedia right here there's a lot of information on the San Andreas fault system here uh, if you want to read up on it, some technical di uh, technical issues here too, on um, how everything works in the uh, in the plate boundary area, on different sections, and a long time ago, millions of years ago, what it looked like, and the present areas of the North American and Pacific plate. But uh, right now we remain quiet. But one of these days we're going to see that large circle, that large square. Uh, it's probably going to be bigger than that, situated right over this area right here, and it's going to be major damage for the folks there in the in Southern Cal. Looking at Yellowstone National Park real quick. Not any type of earthquake activity. No swarming to report. Uh, nothing different from my last update. So. Trimber map, I did check that out a little bit earlier. There's some activity in Northern California that's been picking up. Well, actually, no, it looks like Northern Oregon. I could swore I had seen something here in Northern Cal, but maybe not. Let me go back one day and double check that. Right now, activity is confined to uh, Northern Oregon region. But uh, let's bring back 713. I think I showed this one yesterday, so. Yeah, just a couple small small areas there in northern cal that's seen some uh, uh movement along the cascadia subduction zone downwind down slope if you will of the lock section which sits off here um so this is a subducting area slow slip trimmer movement that's uh, being picked up kind of moderate well it's kind of minor this is all minor activity right now nothing major to report in this region no explosion of a uh, of um of activity if you will so anyway folks uh gonna jump off here just wanted to cover that earthquake article along the san andreas fault there uh, just in case you missed it they did put it out yesterday or uh yeah yesterday or a day before 
So have a good night, everyone. Please stay safe out there. And, uh, you know, it's getting crazy out there. The world is getting crazy. That's, and it's not letting up, man. It's just not slowing down. It just keeps getting crazier and crazier. And it's just, oh, man, who knows? Have a good night, folks. We'll chat to you guys a little bit later. Peace out.